The stories contained in this podcast are the recollections of the guests we've invited onto the show. We are merely an outlet for people to share their truths, and we accept no legal responsibility for the stories contained herein. I'm Kendra Sheets. And I'm Rich Gill. And this is Enough, a podcast which aims to shine light into the darkened corners of the music industry while discussing the ways we can and should improve ourselves and in turn, our community. So this is our very first episode, uh, episode... Point five, I guess, before our first episode. episode. Point, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I like that. Um, and we thought that we would give everyone a little bit of a background um, of why we've decided to do this. Um, this podcast in this format uh, has not been done from what we've seen. Um, no one has really tackled um, sexual abuse and just abuse in general in the music scene um, in podcast form. Uh, And we thought that it was time that somebody was able to um, focus on that. We've had a lot of discussions on Facebook, in person, you know, everywhere. Uh, People have been discussing this more and more frequently over the last few years. And uh, we decided that we wanted to find a way for uh, people to share their stories. Also, as a way to shed light on sort of what happens after harm is committed, we sort of talk about it. We use the analogy of like of the car crash analogy where everyone wants to see like, you know, what happened, but no one's paying attention to the stuff that these people live with after they've been assaulted or abused. And we hope to shed some light on that because that's where the real uh, work and pain kind of happens. The hope is that people will... Uh, listen to these stories and um, learn from them, not specifically in regards to what happened to the survivor in the story, but more so of what the people did on the other side. Um, The people who listened, the people who did not listen, the people who aided the survivor, the ones who turned their back on them. Um, There's a lot of improvement that needs to be um, handled in in the music scene, in our sector, the music scene specifically. Uh, We wanna talk all the time about how we're light years ahead of everyone else. And we're, you know, more uh, conscious, we're more um, open. And that really hasn't been, you know, picked up to the full extent. It's still very white male dominated. And that mentality still seeps into every crevice of our music scene. You know, I'm 41 now when I was in my twenties and there were no resources like this. So I didn't know how to, um, how to react when someone told me that they had been assaulted or someone was being creepy to them. The hope is that we can sort of provide that, like give the help that we maybe didn't have when we were younger and just show people that everyone's a work in progress. If you reacted one way in the past, you don't have to keep doing that. And I think bringing these stories more to the forefront while they are being discussed, it's usually behind closed doors. It's actually kind of how I came to the thought of, of doing something like a podcast was uh, over the last so many years um, in the music scene, I would say probably the last five to seven specifically, but 10 or more kind of generally, I felt like I was kind of a lightning rod for these type of uh, conversations and comments. I have been holding in a lot of stories from other people that have shared things with me about um, sexual abuse, uh, rape, um, physical abuse. I mean, all different assortments of violence. And um, it usually comes down to people involved in bands in some sect of the music scene, um, you know, in in some way, shape or form. And uh, we wanted to find a way to broadcast these while giving the survivor a safe space to share um, their truth. The whisper network doesn't work anymore. I don't know that it ever worked, but that was sort of the way things were handled for a long time. And all that did was allow predators to continue predatory behavior. Because if you're gatekeeping information that, you know, you're only allowing a few people to know, and I'm not talking about survivors telling their stories like, Survivors, whenever they're comfortable, if they're ever comfortable, uh, they can tell as much or as little to whoever they want. Uh, But when it comes to secondary people, uh, people like us, um, it just, it it doesn't 
help to hold on to this information and not give people the platform to share their stories. What is our background? Uh, for myself, I've been involved in music uh, since my very first show when I was 10 years old. I don't know how involved I was at that point, but it started the wheels churning. Um, since then, I've written for a number of zines, um, websites. I run Bad Copy, um, the badcopy.com. Um, I've also toured with bands. I go to shows. I mean, it's like five shows a week, usually before COVID. Um, I run a small PR company. I've started taking photos about five or six years ago of bands. So it's kind of an all encompassing lifestyle for me, um, which is how, why this is so important because this is outside of my actual nine to five job. This is the rest of my life. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's the same with me. I've, I saw the, I saw the Sex Pistols when I was 16 years old in 1996, not 1977 or whatever. <laughs> uh, so I've been involved in some facet of the music industry since I was 15 or 16. I am currently the program director for the Sound and Scene Film and Music Festival, which is a film festival and music festival based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, but I've done, you know, I used to put on basement shows in my house. I was a merch person, tour manager for most of my 20s, uh, doing everything from basement shows to the Warp Tour. Um, I've worked for Live Nation. So I've just, you know, been involved in some facet for as long as I can remember. When you have access, as Kendra can attest to, to bands and stuff, you do see things and you find out things and you, you know, um, you're privy to information that not everybody else is and good and bad. In the probably the most layman's terms to describe why we're doing this, there's that mentality. If you don't like America, then you can get the hell out. And then everyone else is thinking, no, if I don't like America, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to work on a change until it's the country that I love and support and believe in. And if you can replace America or for our sect of the music scene, I think that's kind of where we're at mentally. We're not going to leave, but we're also not happy with where it is. And these things need to come to the forefront and be handled so everyone can be in a safe, a safe space, a space that is, um, you know, non-judgmental. It is not um, violent in any way. Um, it's, it's consensual. It's somewhere that you don't have to worry about, you know, checking behind your back when you go out. Enough is a podcast centering on abuse, harassment, and assault in the music scene. To help get the word out, please like or subscribe and share with your friends. If you have been on the receiving end of harm from someone, be it artist, venue owner, audience member, or someone else, and would like to share your story on a future episode, please reach out to us at thisisenoughpodcast at gmail.com. All correspondences are kept confidential.